two works of art, one a place of worship and music, one a perfect acoustical instrument. What sort of synergy do we create if we put them together? When Tartini wrote his Devil's Trill Sonata, he knew this was to be his finest composition. Here's his description from 1713. One night in the year 1713, I dreamt I had made a pact with the devil for my soul. Everything went as I wished. My new servant anticipated my every desire. Among other things, I gave him my violin to see if he could play. How great was my astonishment on hearing a sonata so wonderful and so beautiful played with such great art and intelligence as I had never ever conceived in my boldest flights of fantasy. I felt enraptured, transported, enchanted. My breath failed me and I awoke. I immediately grasped my violin in order to retain, in part at least, the impression of my dream. In vain, the music which I at this time composed is indeed the best I've ever written and I still call it the Devil's Trill. While Tartini wrote 135 violin concertos and countless sonatas, the Devil's Trill remains his most famous work. It has been transcribed not only for violin and piano as was originally intended, but for orchestra and various continual instruments. <laughs> description by Tartini continues, but the difference between it and that which so moved me is so great that I would have destroyed my instrument and have said farewell to music forever if it had been possible for me to live without the enjoyment it affords me. Playing in this glorious cathedral, I was reminded of a quote by the famous Irish tenor John McCormick, who said about the great Enrico Caruso, Thirty-six years later, that voice still rings in my ears. The memory of it will never die. What happens when one of the world's great instruments is given its own voice? Beethoven's Kreutzer Sonata had an auspicious beginning. It was originally dedicated to the violinist George Bridgetower, 
who performed it with Beethoven at its premiere in 1803 at a concert which started at an unusually early hour of 8 a.m. Bridgetower sight read the sonata. He had never seen the work before and there had been no time for any rehearsal. enraged and ripped out the dedication, instead dedicating the work to the great pedagogue and soloist Rudolf Kreutzer, who was considered to be the finest violinist of his time. However, Kreutzer never played the work in his lifetime.
Maurice Ravel is not known to audiences as a prolific composer for string instruments. However, in the early 1920s, Ravel showed a particular interest in writing for the violin. In 1922, he heard the Hungarian virtuoso Yeli Daranyi playing Bartok's Sonata No. 1 with Bartok at the piano. And he decided to write a showpiece for Yeli Daranyi, who happened to be the great niece of Josef Joachim, for whom Brahms wrote his famous violin concerto. <laughs> Fritz Kreisler epitomized elegance and flair as a violinist. His compositions became favorite encores for violinists to come. 